This is for the LS11 block. And as indicated here, it is modified. So I'm going to go to the booklet. And here is the, in the booklet, it's printed and it says top border 11, but it really is the left border 11. It's in the left border packet. So just be aware of that. And this is very straightforward assembly. It's got a checkerboard type effect and we're assembling this in rows. This is a background piece with an applique half moon on it. And then this is just, these are just rows, straight up rows in order of assembly. And then there's a little tiny applique football on the tip here. So we're gonna go over to the pieces and the basting is pretty straightforward too. I baste squares opposite sides and opposite sides and pretty much all of these are squares. On these little rectangles, I do the short sides first and then the long sides. And same thing here for this is the only tricky one I would say. Do this first, then this, and then this so that your tags will be going away from the center. And then this is going to be these two first and then this last so that the tags are gonna go out towards the outside. This is gonna be a gathering stitch. This is gonna be real fidgety because it's so tiny. So it's gonna be, it's gonna be the same basic thing as the bigger ones, but it's gonna be really a tight space. So it's gonna be kind of interesting how to do that. I may have to trim it down, but the tendency is you don't wanna trim it down too much, but you've gotta cram all that fabric underneath that little, fa light, that little football. So when I get closer to getting this done, I'll see how much I need to trim off because I don't wanna trim off too much and then have it fray on me and have to get a new piece of fabric. So the first thing I'm gonna do is baste these two pieces. I'll glue base this, gathering stitch base this, and then applique this onto here so I can have the band ready to go. So I basted my background piece and I also basted my curve, but I've already put it on top of the, I've already stapled it down here, but I, I've did the gathering stitch and stuff and basted that down. So now I've got this stapled so I can stitch on all of the sides to get it applique down. So I've appliqued this down and took out the basting and the staples. So this is going to be the fattest part of my triangle. Next, I'm going to work on assembling this row after basting my pieces. So I've basted my pieces. I basted these opposing. So I basted this side first on this square and then this side. On this one, I did these first and then this. This avoids having a too thick of a seam here because there would be a secondary fold on both sides. So it helps keep it accurate more. And um, these, I did the short sides and then I did the long sides and then I stitched them together. So I have this whole row assembled and I'm gonna now attach it to my band, making sure that I line up my angles at the edge. So I'm gonna, I will, line it up here and sew into about here and then tie off, come back to this edge and then sew all the way across. So that way I can be assured that my angle is gonna be correct as I move down the, the triangle. So I've stitched my two sections together and this is what I have so far. And I'm gonna put this up here. My next section is gonna be these three pieces and those are gonna go here. So let me baste and connect these again and I will, I will um, do these opposite of the other ones next to it. So I will do these first and then these and then for this I'll do these first and then these. That way I can keep my seams as accurate as possible. So I've got these three pieces basted. I've got these were the last ones on this one, and then this side was the last one on this one. So now I will stitch them together. Now I've got them stitched together, and I've already put my tape on it to put, attach to my other row. So I'll get that stitched to that. So I put this on here, but I had a couple of points of interest. I'm gonna line this up on this here. Um, I haven't actually sewn it on yet. I'm gonna stitch to about here and then I'll come back over here and then you know line I'm going to line this up a bit it's not quite lined up like it should be 
But the other thing is, is that you want to make sure that these are lined up exactly because anything being off here will definitely show. So I've got this seam between these, this point with, that's on a, against a single piece. So this will be an X stitch if I need to take up when I need, well, when I need to take up this little bit of extra growth. So that way this will be lined up and this will be lined up at the same time. So you want to force your rows to be exactly where you want them to be. The papers and stuff, they'll figure it out. And then once you get them out, it'll relax and you get it quilted and you're good. But make sure that your intersections are exactly where they want to be. So I've got my row connected to the others. My intersections are right and the angles on the side of my triangle is correct. So I'm going to set this up here. Next is going to be the 10 through 14 row, and I will base these and attach them like I did the other rows. And I'm going to move these up. So I'm going to do this row right here, 10 through 14, and get those basted and attached. So I've got my pieces basted, and now I will stitch them together into a row. So I finished this row, and that's what we have on the other side. So I'm going to attach it to the other one, making sure that I line up my edges and my intersections where they need to be. So I got this row completely attached, and this is what it should look like on the front. I'm going to set this aside. The next section here is 7, 8, and 9, which is this row of three. I'll get those basted and sewn together. So I got these guys basted and I've sewn this one together and I will now sew that one together. Okay, so this row is now together and that's what we have on the front. And we're going to put this on the rest of the assembly now, making sure to get my intersections and my edges correct. So this row has been added and that's where we are at this point. Now it's a matter of this one piece gets basted and attached to that. So I basted the sides of this first and then the long sides and then I attached it to the triangle. Now I'm going to take the next row, which is these three pieces, and I'm going to base this outside section first and then this one and then this one so that my tags will go outside here. I want to do this one first and this one next so that I can get this point as sharp as possible. And I'm going to do obviously the mirror image over here and then this I'm going to base this side and then this. So then I will be able to sew them together. So I basted these. My tags are pointing out towards the outside. And I've stitched this one down and now I'm going to attach this one. So I got both edges on my rectangle and I'm going to attach it to the triangle. Okay, so I've got my row connected to the rest of it. We're almost done. Now I've got my tip and I'm going to baste this the best I can so I can get this. I'm probably going to trim it down a little bit, but not much. I'm going to base this best I can and then I'll base this down with these first and then that and then I can applique it on. So I probably cut this down a little too far and it's really bad. But um, I'm going to try to put this on the best I can and if I screw it up I'll go get some more fabric because it's a tiny, tiny piece of fabric. But I'm going to try this and see what happens. So that's the general gist of having that applique down. I don't particularly care for it, but it's the general shape of a football. It's tiny, so it won't get noticed in the quilt that much. And I'm just going to take out my applique and connect it to the top of my triangle. So now that I've attached it to the tip of my triangle and taken out the, the basting, it doesn't look so bad. So. Now I am done with my LS11 triangle.